Welcome back to the Lugnut two-part transfer case overhaul series. This episode we're going to pull the bearings, we're going to pull the seals, we're going to clean everything up, inspect it, put new bearings in, new seals in, and put all the new goodies back together and get that sucker buttoned up so we can put it back in that old square body. to start with the front output bearing and I'm just going to grab that little tri-jaw puller, expand out the jaws and uh, set it up and start cranking that bearing out. By starting with the bearing that'll free up the back side of that seal so you can just grab a straight on punch and just pop it out from the back side. A little bit easier than using a seal puller. So it's important when you're pounding on the back side, make darn sure you're not pounding off too far and you're hitting actually the seal, otherwise you'll gouge the housing. Okay, we got the case flipped over and stripped back down. Now we're just gonna pound out that last bearing. Of course, we've got the strap in our way, but I'd much rather have to deal with the strap than having a case flopping all over the place. So we just go back and forth like we did in the others, and it'll come out nice and clean. Now just grab a seal pick and pull that o-ring out of the case. Okay, so that housing is completely stripped. Nice thing about a good pry bar, is it through steel so you can actually hammer on the back side of it without breaking them. Now I'll pull the little torquing bearing on the back side of the input shaft using our little three jaw puller. Alright, so we're up to the last bearing. Then the back case half, that's a support bearing for the front output shaft. Set it up and pull the last one out. Then we'll get on to cleaning. All right, one of the things you really want to make sure of is that there's no contamination in these oil uh, feed holes. Um, they basically uh, make sure that the oil transmits in through to the bearings and they spray some brake clean there and then make sure uh, make sure they got nothing flying out of them and, and it's all clean and good and ready to go back together. Before I clean up any of the case halves, I'd like to quickly just cover up all my next thing parts then I don't ruin all my work. All right now next up is the case house. So if you remember earlier on there was silicone in the back side of here and uh, you can see black RTV everywhere. Um, one of the things that the RTV that's used for uh, two machine baited surfaces is actually not supposed to be black RTV. Ultra grade is Permatex they design. It's, it's, it's meant for this purpose. Uh, as well as others, but uh, it, it does work really well uh, for this. And you just want to make sure uh, when you're applying it that you're not putting great big heat feed on. Um, it's just a nice thin film. <laughs> We're, I'm at the point where I can start uh, uh, pounding some seals or seals in and pounding some bearings in. And uh, realistically, all you really need is just a very simple uh, little bearing and, uh, and seal insulation tool. As long as you line everything up all nice and straight, you can just tap tap away and, and uh, just pound those bearings home and in nice and straight. We'll just start with the uh, front output shaft bearing and be this one right here so uh, grab a chunk of wood for some backing to level it up a bit so this has this little end end here or a little little uh, bump here 
You don't want to be pounding on that because every time you hit, it's going to want to rock. So you space it up. It's also got a high spot there. So take and do it accordingly. So when you do, there we go. So it's nice and nice and flat. And then find some dunnage or something to put underneath the back end. There we go. That's nice and straight. Good grasp on it, good down and forth. And there she is. She's home. Perfect. So a lot of guys will take and loop them up now. I prefer to leave them dry just in case I have to go somewhere or take it, flip it down. Input check. Okay, nice and straight again. Set. There we go. Another way. Alright, let's make sure. Nice and clean. Now, if you remember, there were two here. There was one flush with this end, one flush with the other end. And you can actually see on the inside. You can actually see a line where it stopped right there, and there's the line where the other one stopped. Um, so what what I'll do is I'll pound the one in from this end, and then I'll block everything up, and we'll pound the other one in from the other side. Pretty simple. So again, I'll make sure this is good and true. There she is, home. That one. And that same size driver will work. Next up, let's get some lube on these rollers. So this is Vaseline. It breaks down with the ATF and uh, and doesn't harm any of the seal. seal. So, big thing is the drain back holes and stuff like that. You just want to make sure you don't fill those full. Um, so good liberal coating on those. Input shaft. So in the event you need to swap to a 32 spline input, this is a 27 spline input. Uh, this is the component you would be swapping out. Happen to have this uh, little handy uh, container for finding the grinder wheels, and that fits very near perfect right on there. So now we have a nice platform to uh, put this together on. I mean, all our mass and all our weight is going to be over here, so it should not tip over. Now, selector shaft, the seal is installed. This is cleaned up, got some petroleum jelly on the surface there. Uh, just... There we go. There, now it's going to flip back and forth. All right, so next up, we need to put the plan theory in. When we do that, we want to make sure that the fork goes on prior to actually putting this in. Otherwise, it is virtually impossible to get in after the fact. Okay, so I'm just going to guide it in, find the spot, and there it goes. So now we will, of course, as you can see, that the actual shaft is not in. So, let me that up a bit. I'm just going to clock it so that, that pin goes into the... Uh, There, so now it's clocking in. Perfect. Next up, we got to get this uh, thrust bearing in place. Now, if you're wondering which side the uh, the uh, little washer goes on, you can easily look at the back side, and you can see there's a wash wear pattern already on the back of that. It's not to mean that it goes on like that. Simple. 
so. Again, a little bit of petroleum jelly. All right, so before we throw the main shaft in, uh, we need to make sure the synchronizer struts are put in place. Let's drop them in. Three of them, of course. We'll take our synchronizer. And that way, with the synchronizer in place, it actually holds everything nicely. Let me take it and turn it down. No sense having it up in the air. Now we can take, throw the first one in place. Throw the little tab off the end of the screw, or off the end of the spring. Throw that in. All right, we feed. So that's in place now. All like it should be. So now we'll do the next step. And three. There we go. All right. So now we want to really resist popping that up and down and having them fall out. Then it'll just spray all over the place. And uh, ask me how I know. Yeah, well, I'll be honest, that was the third take. So, uh, <laughs> we'll drop this assembly in. There we go. All right. Beautiful. Okay, next part to go in would be a new shift fork. Of course, we need our new pads for that. long and short one so that is a long one that's for the other fork now that new fork I bought had pads on it so I didn't end up using the one that was kit so toss those in Well, that's good. I'm happy with that. This uh, has the spot for the spring to sit on and it's actually intact. So I'm going to now run that shaft in. All right, so I'm just packing these lovely little bearings in place, rollers in place. Make sure they're nice and snug together. There we go. There you have it. Two of them. Two rows of roller bearings. Now we'll make darn sure that all of our thrust bearings and everything are ready to go on. We need to take our chair. Without dropping this, put our chain on. Now we can grab it. Deal. Push them back down. All right, so <laughs> now uh, if you notice here, I've got a support underneath here. Uh, had a had some fun catching some some work before it fell to the ground. We will uh, proceed. On. There we 
go. Lovely. Look at that. All right. And then the other one. So there's a collar uh, that's locating dowel there that goes there on either end. They both have a have a washer. So right. last thing you want to do is just run it down and uh, too tight and have it snap. Take a little detent and sensor and spring. Drop that puppy in there. And yes. Run that in. Beauty. Okay, running down to the wire here. Uh, next up we've got uh, oil pump. Of course the seal goes in on that surface right there. Slides in pretty simple. Uh, of course, the little shoulder uh, goes in and actually goes onto that portion there. Our speedo drive goes on there. Use that to push that the rest of the way. Ooh, beautiful. Uh, these little tabs, they've got to go into here that holds the outer housing of the oil pump. Take a quick look, you can see the not even a 16, 30 second of a bead uh, is what would have come out the inside. So that is exactly what you want when you're assembling. Um, again, there's a very little tiny bit there, um, but you can see it, it's even all the way around. We got a good seal. seals, new chain, a new fork, and all the other little wear items replaced. Hey, and something I never had before, a magnet. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, appreciate your time. If uh, you liked what you saw, please hop on down to the bottom there, hit the like and subscribe, and uh, share it out with your friends. If you've got any comments, concerns, please uh, shout out. Uh, leave some comments in the bottom. And uh, I'm David Olegna, reminding you to keep them going.